but Penn State is going to Michigan. Michigan is a seven point favorite. Game kicking off at noon Eastern. Just feels like classic football, right? Two big brands in the fall time. The leaves are changing colors. It'll be a little bit crisp. Two teams that like to run the football, play physical. I'm fired up for this one. The narrative doesn't change for this show. For Michigan, it's a chance to separate. It's a chance to show, yes, we look a little bit different offensively. Got a new guy pulling the trigger for us at quarterback, J.J. McCarthy, the young gun, but we're still here. We're still one of those forces in the Big Ten. Still got to deal with us. Chance to really prove themselves because this is their first real test. No knock on Maryland. Indiana gave them a bit of a scare, but I think this is their first real test where the logo has all of Michigan's attention. This Penn State logo, or maybe the lack thereof when it comes to their white helmets, that will get Michigan's best shot. I'm excited to see what that looks like. For Penn State, I think it's their chance to the same token to prove they belong in that upper tier of the Big Ten. Because there's been a lot of talking about Ohio State and Michigan, and I promise you, James Franklin just sort of sitting there, maybe rubbing his head a little bit, just saying, I mean, did they forget about us? They forget how experienced we are at quarterback. They forget all the things we've done in the past. It's their chance to make a statement as well. I think they want to very much prove, hey, you mentioned Ohio State, you mentioned Michigan. You better mention the Nittany Lions as well because we're for real. And a win in this game would signify that to the rest of the country. Question for J.J. McCarthy. How do you handle an accelerated shot clock, my guy? Because as good an athlete as he is, Penn State is really good at pressuring the quarterback. They're going to get after him quick, fast, in a hurry. So when you watch J.J. McCarthy these last few games, he'll take a three-step drop, five-step drop. When he gets back there, he's got all day to throw. I mean, he's got all spring vacation to throw. Just kind of hanging back there. And he also trusts himself quite a bit with his athleticism. He knows if someone comes off the edge, one, I see them coming because I've been back here for 14 hours. Two, I'm fast enough to where I can get away. That's going to be a little bit more neutralized. Not to say that Penn State's going to just take it away, but they're going to make him get the ball out a lot quicker than he's been able to in the past, or he's been forced to in the past, rather. Something I want to see. Because with J.J. McCarthy, we've talked so much about his talent and the potential that Penn State has to, excuse me, the potential that Michigan has as an offense with him at quarterback. They can score more points. They can probably score quicker, all that. But we haven't really seen him go through any growing pains yet. And just full transparency, every quarterback, every young quarterback will have a growing pain kind of moment. And to remind you of your middle school days, you know that different people have different growing pains, if that makes sense. Some of us get mustaches, and in the eighth grade, we're the cool kid. Some of us in the eighth grade have really bad acne. Which one is it for, for J.J. McCarthy? Are the growing pains four interceptions in an ugly game and you take an L? Or is it, hey, two interceptions, one bad fumble, maybe it's, maybe it's only a couple interceptions and it doesn't kill you? That's something I'm curious to see because I think that kind of game is still out there for him somewhere. Is it this Penn State game? I don't know, but this will be his first real test having to play a front seven that's going to pressure him and make life difficult. When it comes to Penn State, the offense is always going to be a hinge point, right? Like the fan base, whether it's fair or not, they have, I don't want to say issues. There's a little bit of a love-hate with Sean Clifford. Some of it might be because Drew Aller's on the sideline and he's got a whole bunch of stars next to his name. And when you've seen him in action, he's been pretty darn good, been more or less as advertised at points. The potential is exciting about him. So maybe that's why you hear more Sean Clifford hate than you probably should. But there's pressure on him, right? And we've seen when this offense is able to be balanced, when they can take pressure off of him, that's when he's at his best. Because a lot of the issues that Penn State fans have with Sean Clifford, I don't know if all that's fair because you remember there was a drought for a while there where Penn State couldn't run the football effectively. How many of you know when you're a quarterback and the defense knows you can't run the football, it's really hard to be efficient and effective on offense? So maybe a little bit of grace for Sean Clifford. But what this game comes down to for me, for Penn State's offense, can you be like the stove, a hot stove rather? Not just can you cook, not just can you be able to get things going on second and third down. I mean early in the game. Michigan is going to try and pressure Sean Clifford. They will test him. They will come after him, and they will try to make his life uncomfortable. 
for Penn State? Can you be that hot stove to where, where Michigan goes for you? They burn their hand. You hit them with a big explosive play over the top, ideally. Maybe it's to Strange. Maybe it's to Tinsley. Whoever it is, can you hit a big play deep to where Michigan says, all right, that hurt. That burned us. We're not going to do that anymore. We're going to have to play a little bit more honest. Because if you can, that makes the rest of the game a whole lot more simple for Sean Clifford. You're able to be a little bit more effective, be a little bit more balanced, and live in that play-action game that we saw them do against Auburn. Be able to drop back and have a little bit more of an honest picture rather than having a corner blitz on third down from the boundary. A more simplistic picture is possible if you make them pay early. Burn stove protocol. So at the end of the day, who gets to play more balanced? Michigan wants to run the ball 58% of the time, according to the numbers. Numbers probably a little bit skewed. Same thing for Penn State, right around 53% of the time. They want to feed their backs. It's hard to blame them. Michigan's got Mr. It's Corum himself. It's got the juice. Blake Corum has been balling all year long. He's somewhere around 700 yards already this year, which is just disgusting. Got a two-headed monster at Penn State. Katron Allen, Nick Singleton, both been eating. If you're either program, I think this is going to be a very big hinge point because for Michigan, if you can run the ball, well, guess what? That means you get to then dial some, up, excuse me, dial some stuff up for J.J., you get to then have the safeties creep up, creep up, creep up. Well, hey, we're going deep to Ronnie Bell or insert whatever wide receiver name you want to there. That's the place where that could really start to hurt Penn State. And that's where things kind of get dangerous, I think, for the Nittany Lions. J.J. McCarthy, if it, if it becomes just a quarterback duel, I think you like your chances at Michigan. Like we already alluded to, if you can feed Nick Singleton, if you can feed Catron Allen and get three yards here, get four yards there, you can live in those comfortable situations. That's going to be how they want to operate. Because if you put the pressure on Sean Clifford, you say, Sean Clifford, man, we're getting a yard and a half, two and a half yards of carry right now. Need you to go win the game on the road. I'm not saying he can't do that. I'm saying that's a lot less comfortable than saying, hey, we got third and three, go play action, throw it to Strange. You see where I'm coming from with this? It's not impossible, but you want to be able to be more balanced. For both these programs, Michigan's been really effective against the run, and I think that's going to sort of force the issue against Penn State. So we'll see what happens there, but something to keep an eye on. Who gets to play more balanced? I'll leave it at that. Our prediction for this game, Michigan is scoring 43 points a game. Is it a track meet? I don't know. If it becomes a track meet, favors Michigan. Now, does Penn State allow it to? A whole other talking point. But I think with J.J. McCarthy, like I said, growing pains are still out there somewhere. Is it this game? I don't think so. I think we see his legs play a factor. I think we see the Michigan run defense sort of neutralize the Penn State ground game early, which, like we just talked about, forces that pressure back on Sean Clifford. We think Michigan wins this game in a blue and black kind of fashion. Everybody's beat up after the game. 34 to 24, the Wolverines get a very, very big win at home on Separation Saturday. Hey, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.